Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Chat, my weekly vlog series I post every Monday at midday if you're in the UK, although I sometimes record it well in advance, like today. Well, that's not well in advance actually, I'm recording this on Saturday, later tonight is the weekly Steam group, although sadly I just realised before recording this, whoops, I have a family get together to go to tonight. I should still be back in time to do some kind of get together. You'll know by the time you hear this because it will have already happened, but I suspect what will have happened is that I postponed the start time for like say 45 minutes to an hour and we migrated it to see our steam chat because we planned to record some Dark Souls and that would be a fun way to do it if we had people chatting in the Twitch chat while we did it, basically like we do when we do Monster Hunter Nights, except it'd just be Dark Souls 2. You'd obviously only be able to see CR's side until I post videos of my side, but that's not too bad. And I suppose on that subject I can talk a little bit this week about Dark Souls 2 on the PC, how it differs to the console version, if it does, if it indeed does. As usual I have also polled on Twitter or requested on Twitter for people to throw out questions and whatnot, but the problem is I always record these quite early and a lot of my audience is not in the UK or EU time zones, so it's usually by the end of the day that people have actually submitted things and what I should do really is carry them over to the next week but I keep forgetting. Also this is the last Let's Chat of April, so next Let's Chat I will hopefully try and remember to do the Patreon shoutouts, so by the time you hear this you've still got two days to become a patron on Patreon for as little as one dollar, if you do you get an exclusive ad free video every Saturday, you also get a bunch of other rewards like getting mentioned in the Steam Group Hall of Fame or getting the shoutout in Let's Chat like I was just saying or on Twitter and everything else, what, other, what else is there, if, well if you're in the EU you can get into my Hearthstone series for one, which is kind of on the back burner right now due to the, the things I was moaning about an issue, uh, an issue, an episode or two ago. But still, to go back to the first point, Dark Souls 2 on PC, does it look better? Yeah, yeah it does. It runs at 60 frames or above, I don't know if it does actually do 120 frames, but either way it does 60 frames so it is smooth as hell compared to the console version. It also is prettier, bumped up to full, the texture qualities are better, it's smoother, the anti-aliasing definitely works. But the, te the, the base texture quality is still just not exactly great, which is a shame, but the visuals never really were a massive sticking point for me for Dark Souls on the console. Granted I didn't play it on a massive TV so tearing and whatnot probably wasn't as apparent to me as it was to some. But either way the PC version does look better, and it plays about the same pretty much. I think some of the latest calibrations, the 1.05 yeah, or 6 calibrations have messed with the AI. And I'm not sure if it's a PC exclusive kind of glitch that can happen, but if you return to an area where you've killed enemies, sometimes their bodies have lodged themselves in the walls so that their head is actually like stuck in a wall in the scenery, and it happens too many times to just be random chance, which is the weirdest thing. You'll see some of it in the playthrough if indeed you are watching the playthrough I'm doing of the PC version. I kind of went for a mixed build of the top two out of the four that I pitched because the votes were so very very close. Still going to try and focus on twin blades to see if they're at all viable, but I'm also going to mix in some lightning based faith magic and maybe some hexes because if the, if the general theme is to be kind of like a Sith or a Jedi, then lightning magic is acceptable and so might dark hexes, well I was going to say dark lightning but there's no such thing, hexes of some variety. Plus if I use any of the weapon buffing spells from any of the schools of magic really, that would make the twin blade look more like a lightsaber anyway, so it would fit the theme I think. And hopefully it's going to be quite enjoyable, I don't know if twin blades would really be viable if I was playing purely by myself, but I am going to be doing mostly co-op. The first few parts are not like that, some of the parts that I am talking to CR, but we're playing separately because our soul levels were too far apart. We are now kind of within the range, so we should find it relatively easy, as well as good Rory joining us as well, to, when there's not an NPC that needs to be summoned to do some jolly cooperation. And the, the very first part of the playthrough that you possibly won't have heard by the time you hear this, uh, the very first part where I invited CR on, there was a Skype error so he wasn't audible, but it's only for that part. The next part onwards, anytime he's on it's perfectly fine. We found the option that I had set to the wrong thing that was stopping him being picked up by OBS, so thankfully we fixed that. But yeah, I'm very impressed with Dark Souls 2 on the PC so far. I'm I'm still addicted to it, I'm still enjoying playing it, I'm antsy to play more. I'm doing a less professional edit, I would say, of my actual playthrough, I think I went through this in one of the parts, but because I'm just kind of taking the raw files from OBS with the sound, with uh, a microphone sound, I mean, included in it, 
I can't really edit it because if I do it balloons the file size and then I'd have to hand break it and there's a loss of quality for an overall net gain of what, a 10 second outro that barely anyone will probably ever watch. So for this playthrough it's just kind of being uploaded raw and it, it isn't as professionally done in the sense that I'll be talking to other people rather than just talking to the, the, the audience watching the video. Sometimes, not always. So it's a different style to what I've been doing lately. A bit more in keeping with how I used to do things actually, so I'm interested if people enjoy that style more or less. I am kind of in the swing of being able to commentate by myself though, so I don't mind doing things alone. But it's a nice it's a nice way to mix things up, because we are essentially doing a playthrough of the game I just finished a playthrough of. Granted it's a, it's a different build, but that's not necessarily enough for some people. So yeah, Dark Souls 2 on PC, I still recommend it. I wouldn't recommend buying it via Steam directly because the price they're charging is hilarious. I would get a download code for it from gaming online retailers. They're selling it for cheaper than Steam is and you can still activate it on Steam. So yeah, I would suggest doing that because pay, never pay more than £30 for a PC game. Never ever. Unless it's like some ridiculous special edition with tangible rewards. I would say never ever pay more than 30 for a PC game. Which is interesting actually because I recently covered Wasteland 2. Um, the look at of that might be going up this very day in fact, but either way it costs £35 and that is a massive sticking point, but that's due to uh, a Kickstarter reason. Still, talked about Dark Souls 2 enough I think, so moving on to another topic and I'm going to quickly check my Twitter while I do this just in case. Oh I did actually get something, hang on. Uh, oh, <laughs> someone saying learn how to watch YouTube better and then I don't have any topics. Well. Thank you at least for contributing, Ollie. Most people don't bother. Or they do, but way too late after the fact. Hmm. I guess I'm going to have to pull out the big guns. I have another dog related video, but it's not my dog, it's my sister's dog. She was playing with a... It's one of those really hard plastic treat balls that has like just a tiny opening in it. So you, you fill it with treats and then you leave it with the dog when you leave the dog alone. Because then the dog has to like hit it around all over the place to get the treats inside and it, it keeps them occupied while you're not there. Well, there wasn't any treats in it, but for some reason my sister's dog just became enamoured with this ball and absolutely loved playing with it. It's quite sad really because there's a lot of jealousy between my sister's dog and my dog when they get together. So if one's playing with a certain toy, the other dog must have it. But either way, there is a video playing now, or maybe right now or just prior to me saying this, of my sister's dog toying around with the plastic ball thing and thoroughly enjoying herself. I did get a message on Skype, but I don't think that's going to be related to me recording. I'm going to read it anyway. Um, it's CR telling me which NPC in Dark Souls 2 sells infinite amounts of repair powders. It was I thought I knew which one it was, but it turns out I was wrong. So there you go. If you don't know, and for some random reason you were listening to this hoping for the answer, it's Chancellor Williger that sells infinite repair powders in Dark Souls 2. He is the ghost NPC at the start of Dragonlight Castle. Anyway, yes, I, I was talking over the dog video, but still. I don't want to hear nothing about her dog being cuter than Maya because those comments will be deleted. Maybe. I don't know if I'm that cruel. But still, what else do I have to talk about? I didn't plan anything ahead this time, other than talking about Dark Souls 2 on PC, which I knew really wouldn't eat into too much time, and obviously the silly dog video as well. So this may be a bit of a short one. We've only been going for eight minutes here, so I really do need to think of something else to talk about. I could scroll back on TweetDeck to try and find uh, questions from last week, Actually, I might do that, because that way I don't like that I kind of did semi-ignore people last week, and TweetDeck makes this so bloody easy. I'm already back three days ago, I'm already back five days ago, so there we go, we should be able to find the questions now. Well, no, there was a cheeky request from Gail to give him a happy birthday shout out on Twitter, but I did that, so that's okay. Hang on, I'm nine days ago now, that's not right. I went too far! <laughs> I don't know, we've gone too far, we've dug too deep. Screw it! I can't. I can't actually see that. I got too many. I've, I've covered too many indie games this week, so a bunch of their developers followed me, unfortunately. And I think last time I spoke about where my channel was going, content-wise, I am planning on doing the Amazing Spider-Man 2 game that's out on the 5th of May, I think. So not too long after you hear this, that'll be running in conjunction with the PC playthrough of Dark Souls, and also the Monster Hunter playthrough, which I have recorded a bunch of hunts for. I think you've seen two of the four I recorded in over the course of a couple of days. Still very much enjoying Monster Hunter as well. And still got a long way to go I think, but that's fine with me because 
it's bridging the gap until next year when Monster Hunter 4 is all out. Oh, speaking of which, there was a brand new trailer for that showing the... Well, in Japan it's called Monster Hunter 4 G, but for us it's the only version we're getting and it's called Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. It's showing a bunch of the, the new monsters they're putting in for this version. So... The Diabolos is coming back, for instance, and it showed the the crab type enemies that are from Freedom Unite. They're being brought back as well in this new area that Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate is getting. Um, who else? Uh, there was more monsters from Freedom Unite in the trailer, but I can't remember their names. Still, it's nice that they're we're getting the complete version. We're getting the version that they always bring out after the first of a new wave. I don't think it's going to be any different from, like, say, a graphical perspective. It's still on 3DS only, so it's, there's a limit to how much it can do. It doesn't look terrible, it just doesn't look as, I was going to say as good as um, the one on Wii U, but the Wii U one isn't exactly amazing either, especially when you see the PC Japan or Korea only MMO one, which looks amazing quite frankly. But yeah, it's a long wait till that comes out, and I still don't know whether or not I'll be able to do a playthrough of it, I mean I'll obviously play it, but whether or not I can record it, it very much depends on if I get enough support via Patreon or save enough money by then to buy a capture card 3DS because that's by far the easiest way to do it. I also have to make sure I buy a very specific kind of capture card 3DS that doesn't mount the capture card on the back because otherwise you aren't able to use the, the, the what do you call it, the, the pad plus, the, the additional analog stick for a 3DS which you very much require to play a game like Monster Hunter. I've heard that the Monster Hunter 4 controls are better but I'd still prefer to use the two analog stick setup because that just makes the most sense to me. It still baffles me that Nintendo shot out a handheld that didn't think of including two analog sticks. I mean, games just need it. I, I, maybe it was a size issue or something, I don't know. But it was just, it was always stupid to me. I mean, Sony's as guilty of it as anyone as well, because obviously the first PSP only had the one stick, and thankfully they corrected that with the, the Vita, which makes it much easier to play uh, old PS1 games and whatnot on it. Like, for example, Freedom Unite you can customise the controls so that both analogue sticks are used even though the game was made before that was even possible. So that's good. I got off on a tangent about Monster Hunter there. I am still enjoying it though, and that's the important thing. And my dog's barking, which is also very important. Barking because I think I can hear a car outside my window. And that won't do. No one is allowed in front of my window. That's a random aside, actually a very, very random aside. I took my out about, yeah, about an hour before recording this. Early in the morning, a little bit, for a Saturday I suppose it's quite early. It was raining last night quite heavily, I was just walking along with the dog. I was glancing at the road while she was kind of pausing to sniff a lamppost and soaking, folded over in a puddle next to the curb, I just happened to notice that there was a £10 note. So I took it. And it's always a bit weird when I do that, I mean it's not the first time in my life I've found money. I remember once when I was a kid finding a fiver on the side of a road with some friends and we decided to go to the door of the house closest to it and ask if they dropped it and they just said no you just take it you know go spend it on sweets and I think we did from memory I can't remember but I don't know where it came from so I took it so it, it does feel a bit weird when you do that because I mean where it was it was nowhere near a house because so I wouldn't be able to guess which house it came from most likely it was someone getting into the car judging by where it was and it is soaking like right now it's in front of me on a bit of paper getting dried it might not actually be usable who knows but either way I suppose it was a very profitable dog walk this morning, if nothing else. What I do usually find and have no problem with keeping when I walk the dog is coppers, like you know, one pence, two pence, etc. Because you pass a bunch of bus stops on the route I usually walk my dog, and for some reason, it must be it must be kids because kids don't see value in anything. They must be chucking their coppers away because they think, oh, who cares about coppers? Who cares about one pences and two pences? Well, not only does it add up, but Copper is steadily becoming more valuable than the denotion, denotion that's not the word I'm looking for, uh, the, the value of the coin it's printed. So that's why Canada got rid of coppers, because it, the value of the coin didn't actually come up to the value of the metal it was made from. And that's going to happen here as well, probably, you know, if it carries on. So hoarding coppers might pay off one day, but either way, I just find it funny that I can just walk the dog and you know just come back with a few pence. It's not usually as much as a tenner, but still, it's just because kids, I assume, are just chucking away their money because they'd rather just have notes or higher value coins. And it's like I, I wish I had enough disposable income to just toss away money for no good reason. I mean, what they could give it to charity or you know throw it to a performer in the street or whatever. Last time I was in Sterling, we passed the. Um, 
I think it was a pair of Russians doing polka dance music. It was very funny. It was very good. I would have sat and listened to them if it wasn't pouring. And I went off on so many wild tangents that should probably be more than apparent that that's because I have absolutely nothing to talk about this week other than the stuff I started with that ate up the first eight minutes. And I think that means that we're going to have to stop here. Once again, I didn't really get much input on Twitter, but that's okay. Usually I, I have something to rant about, but I didn't really this week. I've just been playing lots of Dark Souls 2. I've been getting inundated with indie game requests again, so I've been going through those as well. So I haven't had time to keep up with all the latest gaming news, which means I don't really have anything to talk about. So I am going to stop here. Next time there will be Patreon shoutouts, so you still have a couple of days to get in quick if you want to hear your name shouted out, etc. There will also be something else to talk about. What that will be by then, I'm not sure. It won't quite be time for Spider-Man, so I won't be talking about that. Hmm. Actually, what we might talk about next time is some of the hilarious vitriol that is on the community hub for Dark Souls 2. I was reading some of it while CR was streaming last night. And if you haven't looked yet, I would highly suggest looking. I mean, the funniest one last night was the hardest boss in Dark Souls 2, and it was a picture of Dark Souls 2.exe has stopped working. That was quite funny. And there was another one that was, here's how you light a fucking torch if you're using a keyboard. <laughs> because the game does, if you're using the keyboard and mouse setup, and I haven't tested that because I just use the 360 pad, but if you're just using the keyboard and mouse and you have no 360 pad connected via USB to your PC at all, the game's prompts are still the 360 buttons. Which is, I mean, there's a lot of oversights in the PC version. They've, they've been lazy. I will say that. But the vitriol it's created in the community hub on Steam is hilariously magnified. It's so bad compared to how min minor the problems are, put it that way. But anyway, I am going to go now. I'm not going to talk about Dark Souls 2 at length again, because I imagine people are getting a little bit sick of my apparent fandom for this game. So thank you for listening. I will see you again next Monday, most likely. Or I certainly hope so, anyway. And ta-ta for now.